Sweet. And negotiate Stop. business Stop. with and actually get a fabulous souvenir of city rights thanks to Santa Yeah, Santa. we're selling them at discounted rates, so this is like a conference rate. So what? Sorry, the rights are here. It was two dollars for royalties. That's the discount. That's the discount. <laughs> So it's a single edition for six dollars or three for fifteen, oh, wow. um, which is quite a bargain. Can, can, we have that for can I have that for you? Yeah. I'm gonna buy. But it's just <laughs> yeah, but um, they're out in the lobby on the side, so yeah, just know that they're there all day and are waiting for you. So. Can you just buy each of you buy one for me. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm now I'm leaving it on to you. Okay. <laughs> Man's phone, though, there's probably a reward. We will take a third place. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 Kevin Becerra. Yes. Will you let me know when I have to identify the match? Yes. Great. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. This is so much better standing behind the podium now than when I had to give the stupid speech the other day. I'm so much happier to be here. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is to talk about National New Play Network and new plays and uh, a couple of things that we hit. Let's see, you probably know, well, of course, you know Robert Cates. Robert Cates, And you know, I'm sorry, Steve Piaki. On the far side down there is Eileen Swartz. Eileen is the managing director of New Theater here in Miami, which is our member theater here in Miami. Uh, and we're going to talk, they have just completed uh, recently a production of Rob Casely's Happy, which was a rolling world premiere, and they've done several of them over the years. And we're also joined today by Bill Kirschman. Bill is a uh, South Florida resident writer and critic, and also is the president. No, no actually, I'm, I'm the chairman of the American Theater Critics slash Steinberg New Play Committee and contest. Yeah. I have a lot of other hats, but that's that's the one that you guys care about. That's that's I'm in charge of a competition that gives $25,000, which is why you should care. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, since Bill's started, let's let's go there. Um, I, I asked Bill to come today because uh, the Steinberg Award is the, you know, preeminent new play award in the United States right now. Uh, and it's really interesting because it's done by critics uh, throughout the country. And so it's not about what plays had the biggest production on Broadway. Uh, it's, it's about work that's being recognized in communities across the United States. So can you just give us a little background and show sure. us what you're doing? Uh, again, the American Theater Critics Association, which is sort of like the AMA for critics, uh, has for since 1977 had an award to to recognize the best the best produced professional playwright since 1977 in the country outside of New York City. Our feeling is that regional theater works that are created and first produced in regional theaters had very little opportunity to be recognized, and so this was created specifically and to this moment. To if in fact if your play debuts during the calendar year and makes it to New York, uh, it gets disqualified, which we call the uh, 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 August Osage County, which because August Osage County almost won the award that year and then it premiered in uh, New York two weeks before the end of the year and that kicked it out of the running. So we're very very uh, committed to that. Uh, Several years ago, the Steinberg family, whose name is all over any New York theater that you can care to find, uh, very generously uh, increased our award. So it's not called Steinberg. <laughs> the Steinberg Act Award. Uh, it gets, there are three prizes. There's $25,000 for the first prize. And we hate the word prizes in first, but that's the way it goes. And then there are two citations for $7,500 we get somewhere around 40 scripts a year. They are, and this is one of the things you were talking about, it is not self-nominated, it is nominated by critics. In most cases, it's something they've seen, but if not, we have a very proactive system in which we go out and search 
for new work that's being done in, I don't know, we, we probably have 80, 60 to 80 theaters whose rosters and seasons we look at at the end of the year. Uh, again, the criterion, and it has to be done in the previous calendar year, because we judge it in January and February. It has to have been produced, have a full professional production, not a college production. Uh, its first professional production has to be done during that calendar year outside of New York City. It can have 25 productions that year, but not, none of them can be in New York. Uh, and that's primarily it. And then we have a committee of about 12 judges from all around the country who spend an intense two months reading all of these, and we go through three or four ballots. And there are those three awards. I should also point out that there is also the $1,000 uh, Elizabeth Osborne Award, which is given to a, uh, an emerging playwright. There's, if you go on our website, americantheatercritics.org, theater spelled the British way, uh, you'll see all our criterion. But among those people who are nominated for the Steinberg, we also pick someone who is just coming to national attention. In fact, that's the definition, someone who has not come to national attention. We also have the Francesca Primus or Primus Award, depending on whether you're her brother or her, they pronounce their names differently. And that is recognizing women in the theatrical field, mostly playwrights, partially for a body of work that usually uh, contingent upon a particular work in that year. But it's more of a career award, and again, it's for people. Uh, it isn't necessarily for someone that's emerging. Um, I can go on, trust me, forever. Uh, I hope I get a chance at some point. Since I read about 40 full-length plays a year, and vet about another 10 to make sure they fit our criteria, I got a lovely list of advice to people <laughs> on how to get your plays noticed, not just by judges, or, but also artistic directors, literary managers, anybody who has a slush product. There's about four or five big mistakes that people make. And if I don't get time tonight, today, come see me, get my email, and I'll send it to you. Uh, but there's a lot of really easy stuff that the most experienced playwrights don't do well, and newcomers don't do at all, and will help you avoid the fall. That's it. Great. So uh, the Steinberg is presented every year during the Cubana Festival, and um, we at NNPN have become a great feeder of scripts towards that award, mm -hmm. uh, to the point where this year Jim Steinberg, as part of giving it, gave a little speech about NNPN. So let me just back up a little bit. We talked briefly the other day, National New Play Network is an organization of, right now, 27 core member theaters. Again, any company outside of New York that has a dedication to creating, developing, and producing new work. That and producing is a big piece of what we do because one of the criteria for membership in addition to you have to have at least three paid staff members and you have to be a professional company and use you know whatever union category you want, that sort of thing. Uh, is that you have to agree to either import or export a new play from another member theater at least once every three years. Because the original concept behind the company was that there was all this great work that was not getting done, that was dying on somebody's shelf after a world premiere production. So the idea of the second and third productions became the Roland World Premieres, which officially are called the continued, they are funded by the Continued Life of New Plays Fund. And that means, as you've been hearing, that each production, an artistic director gets together a, a group of artistic directors, a minimum of three partners, at least two of whom have to be core members of the organization and they determined that they're going to produce within 12 months from the first opening night to the last opening night, a minimum of three productions of the play in three entirely different cities with three entirely different uh, artistic teams. I'm gonna ask Steve and Rob to talk a little bit about their experiences. We have several additional programs as well, including commissions, including 
producer and playwright residencies. Uh, we do an annual showcase of new plays where through a long selection process, they're whittled down and they're actually somewhere between five and eight are done as readings in a city where the core members are paid to send someone as a part of their your membership, you get travel stipends for people to come to the showcases and the annual meetings. So it pretty much guarantees that at least so, someone from every theater is there plus invited guests, that sort of thing. Steve has, I believe, holds the record for being a part of the most of our projects. Beginning with the lowest level, uh, career-wise, you can step in at, which is the MFA showcase that happens every year in conjunction with the Kennedy Center. And that is we have uh, MFA programs are allowed to submit scripts. They select about six of them. The MFA playwrights are brought to DC for a week and they're partnered with a NNPN director and dramaturg. And they're allowed to work on that script for a week to whatever ends they would like. They can do a full public reading. They can do zero readings. They can spend their whole week working on one scene. They can spend we work in the play. It's totally playwright driven. Or, or they can give you uh, like a Broadway caliber puppet designer to build a bird puppet for you and then spend a week <laughs> teaching an actor how to use it while you watch, which is what I did when it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Steve Young. Uh, so Steve has, <laughs> Steve has been an MFA playwright. He has been a playwright in residence. It's creepy to hear you do it. <laughs> yes, I, in, in my play playwriting workshop, playwriting residency for a year at Marin Theater Company in San Francisco. Which means that NNPN puts $10,000 towards that theater hiring a playwright, uh, at, which gives them time to write. And then the playwright serves on the staff of that theater in whatever negotiated capacity they determine that they want to work with in the theater. And in some cases, houses them, helps them find houses housing subsidizes their housing and they go and live and work in that community for a year and producers they and producers now as well kevin as we mentioned is here because he's just beginning his second year residency at actors playoffs in atlanta also a core member theater you've had how many rolling world premieres uh the, the third one's about to start the third one is about to start so octopus was a rolling world premiere no it was oh. done by it was, it was done, done by, by several members and then uh, Afterlife. Afterlife. Which is the play that I wrote at the, in the Kennedy Center workshop. Right. Um, and then uh, Wolves this season and Pluto next season. Right. Okay. Uh, and you have, have you had a commission yet? No commission. I, I love that you said yet. Knock on <laughs> everything. Uh, no, I did the I did the showcase for the right. first time last year mm -hmm. and uh, the Australia exchange. Right. Year. We did. We have a. a International exchange program as well. Steve uh, was able to take Pluto, uh, which was done in the showcase, pretty much immediately became a continued life project with producers signing on that weekend that there were at least three of us that were going to do it. And then he, we had uh, Australian playwrights as a part of the showcase last year. And then Steve and another playwright went to Australia along with an NNPN representative and presented at a meeting of sort of an equivalent group of new play. Uh, Carson Kreitzer. Yeah, Carson Kreitzer is the other one. It's amazing. Which, uh, her play, uh, Lasso of Truth, is also getting a really world premiere this year. Robert has just finished uh, the really world premiere of Happy. Who was the first in sequence? Um, well, you folks were the first. You're, you They're started. They're the lead I producer, but I think. We didn't see who forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, they were the lead, the, the lead theater, but I think with a, a, a calendar issue, it mm -hmm. actually opened first at Montana Repertory Theater. Mm -hmm. And then it came down to Miami. And then it went out to Northern California to the Sixth Street Playhouse in Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. And it's currently, currently playing in, uh, at the New Jersey Rep. So and when we say mm -hmm. went to, it means the play went to, not the production. Yeah, entirely not separate. Not during the production. Production team. So, um, Steve, having just come off of the Wolves one, talk a little bit about the difference in the three productions in terms of 
the house sizes and so the there, audiences? There, was, there were four theaters you for four. Wars, but it was, it was um, I don't know, I thought at the beginning of it that it was a very like heavily, it is a, it is a very like, heavily prescribed play. The set has to be a certain way because of things that happen at the end of the play. Uh, there, there's just like, it's, it's very specific. And what I got was four incredibly different productions um, that had a lot to do with the performers that were involved in each one. And um, but everyone used the same blood, which Nan alluded to in her speech. The very first theater actors expressed in Atlanta had to figure out there's a lot of blood in the show. Like it takes about 45 minutes to clean up the show after it's done. And um, they uh, they I know it's just and I also write kids shows. Uh, <laughs> and they take an hour and a half to clean up. <laughs> It, they found out that the San Francisco Opera's blood recipe has coffee made in it and some other things that when you cook it up, makes it uh, easily, it comes out of, of clothing and comes out of furniture very easily. And, and it's also edible so that it doesn't uh, choke you and die. And so, um, so once they found out that, all the theaters shared that information on the website that an NPN set up for all of them to use during Wolves. And, um, and so that was a good example of those theaters sharing. But, um, I don't know, the, the most different was the one in Los Angeles because it was in a three-quarter thrust, which that play's not designed to be in. And so I, when I first saw the space, I thought, this is never gonna work. And then the director made it work, so. But it was, it was really fun. Rob, the, the house sizes were happening more drastically. Uh, yeah, New Jersey Rep is a, is a very tiny house. So it's, it reminds me of like a Chicago storefront. Right. It's 62 seats. You guys had about 150? We saw, yeah, 100. Yeah, the house is a lot bigger, but we okay. saw 100, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, Montana Rep was quite a big 250, 275, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, significantly difference in, uh, in the aesthetic distance, you know, between the audience mm -hmm. and the actors. And I think there was actually a playwright asked this the other day, you know, if, if an actor does something good, can you steal that? Um, I, I, I steal all the time from, not just from the actors, but from directors, if they've got something that's particularly good in the staging, I'll memorialize it in the, uh, in the stage direction if I think, oh, that makes absolute sense to do that. And it, you know, because actors are wonderful with inventing business, and, uh, um, so I've taken a lot, lots of little bits of uh, pieces of what the act actors in various cities have done, and embedded it now in the, and will be preserved now in the in the published um, version of the play. I'm glad that you said that, just because the other day on the panel, like someone said, well, what if a director, you know, does something really cool and you really love it, and I was like, take it. And yeah. it's like, <laughs> the only thing that City Theater tweeted that I said, like in direct quotes. <laughs> <laughs> and generous individuals, and most of what we do is refunding. So funds come to us specifically for these programs and we then put them out. The idea behind the funds for uh, Rolling World Premieres initially was that it would help you defray some of the costs that you are, because you were taking the chance on this new work. That's kind of gone away because we have this group of theaters who are very successful doing new work. Now it's become more important about getting people places to see things and having the playwright come along. You've had multiple experiences. Talk to me about playwright involvement in your different experiences. Well, uh, it has varied. Um, we have been the theaters, I think, out of the four or three NFPN uh, continued life that we've done. Uh, only one of them. The lead theater, theater is the actually the first one right. to go. Right. right, that's what that term. Um, we actually were uh, to be the lead theater, but again, calendar issue and stuff like that. We had another theater company that opened uh, before us. Um, communication happens usually. The NMP, uh, NNPN uh, plays are uh, directed by our artistic director Ricky J. Martinez, and he's very good at. He's a playwright himself, so he's very good at, and Robert can probably tell you better, uh, communicating a lot with the, with the playwrights so that they're involved in the process and then though they may not be physically in the room. 
um, and they do a lot of work ahead of time before rehearsals even begin um, to do uh, any work or any questions or, you know, and I think he phrases everything. He's the type of uh, director, an artistic director, that doesn't tell you, you need to fix this, this is wrong, and if you don't fix it, I'm not doing it. That's not the type of director he is. He's more of, what are you trying to say about this? And this is what I'm getting from it. Is that what you intended? He phrases everything more as a question for you, for the playwright to fix or not fix. Um, so he's done that with Robert. He's done that with um, for uh, for better uh, with Eric Kobel, and uh, he's done it for several Edith. playwrights for for Edith for A Raid of Mat Mat, uh, which was another one. And um, which, by the way, if I may say, we're very, very lucky that we've either been part of the world premiere of a, or world and world premiere of productions who, which have been winners or awarded Steinbergs and or nominated for the Osborne uh, as well um, numerous times. So we've been very happy about that. Um, and the reason I was saying the thing about uh, talking to the playwrights and keeping constant communication is that I think that it gives the playwright the opportunity when he's seeing it three, four, five times in some cases, um, and working with different directors and seeing their scripts from a different point of view and finding things they may or may not want to tweak or, um, and can see it within a 12-year span. Where it's been a little different is when we've had a playwright that has been, uh, is very, very much closed <coughs> completely. Um, in the sense of they've already had the world premiere, they don't want to touch the script at all because they think it's amazing and it's never gonna, you know, that there's no issues with it. Which is fine and it's dandy, but that's how the communication sometimes works. It all happens uh, really with the chemistry and the way the playwright um, works um, with, other, with other people's, uh, you know, playwriting is very much a sit in your room, type it up or write it out longhand it's a very singular thing. Once it's going to be produced, it's more of a team. Um, you have to be very, very uh, protective of your baby, um, but you also have to have a little bit of an open mind whether you take the advice or not, but you need to be a little open about it. We've only had like one case where that's yeah. been a little, a little hard to deal with. Sometimes playwrights, and again, it's the playwright's choice in how this project works. Um, we have had over the years playwrights who wanted to be at every rehearsal they could possibly be at for all four productions. Mm -hmm. We've had playwrights who are part of the process for the first one, sit the second one out, maybe just go and see it a couple of times, then do a set of rewrites and want to go participate in the rehearsal process for the third. Mm -hmm. We've had playwrights who got to world premiere, said that's it, I'm done, the script's locked, and then they just go and see it. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the things, well, you guys talk about that. Well, I, I wanted to, to mention that, you know, I well, I think you all know that I, I teach playwriting at, at the, the university. And one of the things that I, uh, one of the trends I notice in my students is this sort of crippling fear that um, the production of the play, they have to get it all right that first time. And uh, one of the wonderful things that NNPN does is that you know that this play is going to get produced more than one time. And so you actually become, I think, more uh, courageous in the way that you rewrite and you experiment. I know that one of the things that I've done is uh, I've continued to cut and cut and cut and cut the play. Uh, the more Good I see play it, right. Good yes. play right. <laughs> the more I, well, the more I see it, the more I realize the actors are doing this, and I don't need to do it with so many words. And so you build up, you know, my process always begins with, you know, the, the hardest pencil I can find. So it's very light trace remarks through, and then I shift the pen, and now I find it's like with a magic marker just <laughs> taking out huge chunks because it, it, it kind of builds up your confidence to see it again and again and again. And, and so that's, that's, I think, one of the great things. I know one of the early uh, rolling, I think actually the first, no, what the first one? It was with the playwright who had done the first one. Um, at Florida State, we were working on it, and it worked like yours, where the first two theaters basically were on top of each other. We one had a Thursday right. night opening, and one had a Saturday night opening, 
and the playwright was really struggling with the end of the play, literally like the last three minutes of the play. And he actually gave us two separate endings. So the Philadelphia production had an ending and the Florida Stage production had an ending. By the time they got to opening night, which was the Thursday before we opened on Saturday in Philadelphia, during the first previews, he determined that the ending that had been his first choice, the one was in Philadelphia, was not working and they scrapped it and put the Florida stage ending on it. So it was actually only ever reviewed with the one ending, but we went down to the, like the last 48 hours with two different endings. Um, yeah, I, was, I was just gonna say, I mean, most of the people in the room know this, but you know, back in the day, you know, a playwright would work on a play in their garret, but then they would hook up with a producer, usually in New York or a major city, and they would talk it together for some time, and then, and here's the part that's, and you know, doesn't exist anymore, you'd get four or five weeks of rehearsal. You know, you guys get what, two and a half? Well, we do new works. It, yeah, when they get new works, they do three, and that's it. And the paradigm, as you all know, has changed. And the expectation, I think, in theater producers, and particularly now that you guys are working a lot in regional theaters, has got to change to where, and you guys at Florida Stage taught me this. I learned by going over and over again to your new work and your new, new work. But as a critic, I have to learn to read to attend new work with a different kind of body. And you taught your audiences a different way of looking at new work. No one who goes to new work now, your, your audience no longer goes expecting to see Arthur Miller's polished, six month polished version of Death of a Salesman. They know that they are seeing a work that you are expecting to have a certain level of quality and professionalism, but is probably going to undergo two or three more changes, and I think one of the things that regional theaters need to do is to help playwrights feel, like you say, freer, to not feel like that first production is the one that's going in stone, even though there are people paying money for it, even though I'm coming to see it and probably opining on it, as I have on, on several of these works. It's, it's a new paradigm, and everybody in the system, from the audience member, to the producer, to the playwright, has to really embrace this. And because our old system just doesn't even exist anymore. No, should it? Susan? I'm giving you five. Thank you. Oh, uh, Steve, can, can yes. Just, mm -hmm. So, okay, so just some nuts and bolts for the playwrights in the room um, about how you get involved with the National New Play Network because that's always the tricky thing is just that it's not, the important thing to know is that while like I more than anyone have benefited from playwrights benefit immensely from the National Union of Play Network, it is in fact an organization for member theaters. It's a theater service organization that sponsors new work. And so you can't apply for things directly from the outside of the National Union of Play Network. The way that you get involved with the National Union of Play well, that and that may change in the future because we're working on an alumni playwrights council right now that may in fact be able to help playwrights enter the network programs um, in a different way. But for now, the way that it works is you go back to your community, wherever you came from, you find the closest National New Play Network theater to you, you start attending that theater, going to see shows there, getting to know the people there, because the theater is the one who's going to take your work and introduce it into the network. It's not anything that you can do yourself. For me, uh, uh, you can you can also get in through it if you're in an MFA program right now and you get into the Kennedy Center summer workshop that can kind of that's how I entered the network um, and then I was just lucky enough that there were a couple theaters and the Actors Express uh, Marin Theater Company that I had relationships with but the important thing is to find your your local National New Play Network theater and not just walk in the door and say hey here's a play of mine can you please submit it for the you know for all of the National New Play Network stuff, but it's to develop a relationship with that theater um, and then see where that goes, because there's all these fantastic programs. But a lot of times, playwrights will come up to me and say, it's so closed off, it's so closed off, how do you get involved? And that's because it's not for playwrights, it's for the member theaters. And I just think that's an important thing to throw right. out in our last play. We also have just opened up an associate membership, I think I mentioned the other day, and there are about 30, it's probably gonna to go to about 50 pretty quickly, associate members, which are people who have 
Um, there are theaters that don't have maybe new plays as their mission, but they have a new play arm, or they're small and they want to be doing new plays. It's everything from teeny, teeny, tiny storefront theaters through Center Stage in Baltimore and Actors Theater of Louisville. Yeah. Um, so if you hit the NNPN website, which is just nnpn.org, and you'll go and there's a, a page that has all the core members and all the associate members. And I mean, we have associate members in little tiny towns in the middle of nowhere. So don't, there's, there is one close to you. And as of this last annual meeting, last two weeks, whatever it was we were all together, we've determined that associate members are also going to be allowed to, uh, to uh, submit for showcase. So uh, we are starting to let those people in. Cricket and then. Um, two questions. I'm assuming we're talking about full length plays here? We are talking about full length plays, although several of our member theaters, and Susie's going to be one. Yes. Oh, yay. Uh, Congratulations. We'll have uh, the associate members do have festivals and small plays. And we didn't get to talk at all about the new play exchange, which I'm really disappointed with. One more quick question. Yep. If my play is going to be used in little community theaters out in major cities, is it disqualified? Yes. Not, you know, yes, if, it's, if you've had a premiere, yes. So just write it up. <laughs> like that's hard. So Man, is, you have some time until Tina shows. Oh, great. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, questions. So the process is um, that the play, I mean, so, the, so the, the theater, local theater nominates you, and then then there's a showcase. I know that there's a showcase. Yeah, there's a showcase. So people will be submit plays. There's a, a, a series of readings that it's gone through. You know, it's chosen, and they choose about six a year. But once you're submitted and sponsored by a theater, your play, whether it's chosen to be in the final six or not, goes into a place that's accessible, which takes me to new play exchange. And let me just give you guys a little brief information because you're going to be hearing a lot about it. This is a mega, mega deal. Um, we are creating from the ground up what is designed to be the most comprehensive, searchable database for new plays in the world. Um, it is being uh, piloted through National New Play Network in conjunction with um, LARC, uh, Playwrights Center in Minneapolis, uh, Bay Area uh, Playwrights Foundation, Chicago Dramatist, Literary Managers uh, of the Americas, the LAMDA, -L -A -A whatever their initials are. Um, we talked about this core group, the CDC, that's getting together and building, and we are literally building, we're not building code ourselves, but we're hiring someone mm -hmm. to build code. Uh, many of you probably are on Dooley. Uh, Lark has a, a, had a commercial version that they've been assisting with. It's going to be called Kanji. There's several programs <coughs> out there that will do different pieces of this. But the goal for this is to get you, any of you that have been through the college application, process in any time in the last few years, know about the Common App, right? So there's a Common App that you can go in and put basically your information in and then there, each college might have a couple more questions. You as a playwright will go on, create your own profile, and you as a playwright are then responsible for keeping your materials <coughs> updated. There'll be a whole series of boxes you can check. I want people to be able to access my entire play which means you won't then get any sort of notification about who is reading it. I want people to be able to access a 10-page sample. If you say you want to just put up the synopsis and there's a box, then they can contact either you or your agent directly and get your play. Here's <coughs> the thing about it. They are recommended. And it's not like a thumbs up like on Facebook. It is a 150 word recommendation, and they have to be positive. They're not reviews of your play, they're not synopsis of your play. It will be someone who's a reader who would go on and say, wow, I love this new play. I'll, I'll use Pluto because we've been working on it. Um, the only thing I could say after the showcase 
uh, reading in DC is I punched Steve in the arm three times and said, motherfucker, 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 because he had made me so angry and upset and moved and it, it's just a gorgeous piece of theater. <laughs> and I was really angry with him because he keeps writing gorgeous pieces of theater and as the mother of an adolescent, it's a very disturbing way. So, um, so I could go in and say that. You could just go in and say this is brilliant and you guys have got to read it. You, anybody who is accessing the site, will be able to follow readers. So if you think I love Steve Yockey's play, you can check off and every time Steve posts something, you'll get a notice. If you like um, Liz Engelman, who's a you know major dramaturg and you really think she's interesting, if you like your local artistic director that you deal with, you just go in and like, and every time he likes something, you'll get his reviews. You can post updates, you can post drafts. It will initially be totally free, because the Mellon is, and Duke, or Duke Foundation are funding it. At some point down the road, there may be a nominal charge, you know, five bucks to set up your own profile. Uh, but it is, good morning, Miss Heck, come on in, we're just killing time. Oh, we're ready. We're ready. Come on. I'm not interrupting. No, no not no, at no. all. No. Anybody no. want to give me what, I'm, obviously I'm here. Yes. 15 seconds. If, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I've got a list now of ways playwrights shoot themselves in the foot when they uh, submit to literary managers or to contests. If you come up and catch me sometime in the next hour, uh, I'll give you my business card and send me your email and I will send you actually a half written article uh, that hopefully will say, and this is experienced playwrights, this is brand new playwrights. I read 40, 50 plays a year and the mistakes people make that hurt themselves and disqualify them is are easy to avoid and uh, uh, but are and some of them are dead obvious, but you'd be amazed what people don't do, and we'll help them immensely. Uh, also, New Play Exchange, will, you'll be able to do submissions. So you can go on and post your play, and, you'll, and you say, I want to know about contests where, for women writers. Every time anybody posts a contest, you can either get a notice, or you will have set it up so your play just automatically gets submitted. You'll also be able to see a full submission history. So when you go onto your page, how many of you have submitted twice to the same contest? It, when you go on your page, you'll be able to say, oh, last year I submitted Thrush and the Woodpecker, this year I need to submit Pluto against Smith Thrush and Wood. You'll have your own history to be able to access. Very quickly, highlight. you want to tell them, because you're talking about something that's in the development stage, what we have now as far as the exchange with how we share our scripts and how we can put it in there, whether it's a national uh, like showcase or right. just something yes. we're recommending. We use, um, I always call it the wrong thing. Base camp. Base, base camp. camp. I always call it backpack. <laughs> <laughs> base camp. Base camp. And if you can get to one of your artistic directors who's a core member or an associate member, they have the ability now to upload and recommend plays in a much smaller version. Um, that's not really a searchable database, but you can, you know, make these people your friends. Don't be obnoxious. Don't bother people to the point where it makes me crazy. Go, go. We're swamping. Thank We're you.